My 2018 Honda Goldwing just recently turned 10,000 miles. So I've had the bike a little more than a year, and after 10,000 miles, do I love it or do I hate it? My 10,000 mile review is coming up right now. Welcome to Cruise Man's Garage. I'm Cruise Man, and I'm going to give you my 10,000 mile review of my 2018 Honda Goldwing. Now, if you're not familiar with this channel, uh, I do a lot of videos on Honda Goldwings and motorcycles in general. So if you like how-to videos or DIY tips, uh, product reviews, tool reviews, and just general cool stuff to do with motorcycles, make sure you click that little subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when I come out with new videos. So let's talk about this 2018 Honda Goldwing. Now I've had mine for just over a year, just recently turned 10,000 miles, as I said in the introduction. And I'm going to tell you some of the things I love about the bike and some of the things I'm not crazy about. I'm not sure if they rise to the level of hate, uh, but uh, I will talk about some of the things I think Honda needs to address later on in this video. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you know I did a one-year review a few months ago, but I only had about 8,000 miles on the bike. And believe it or not, a couple of new things have cropped up since I did that video that I want to make sure to talk about. And there's some things I left out that I think are important. Let me tell you some of the things I love about this motorcycle. As you've heard me say in the past, uh, I think it might be the best motorcycle I've ever owned, and I've owned quite a few. One of the things I love about this bike is the styling. It's one of the things that appealed to me right off the bat. When I first saw this bike when it was released, I said, I gotta have that bike, it's just, it looks so cool. And the previous Goldwing was starting to get a little long in the tooth. Uh, it was starting to look dated and it just really needed an upgrade. And I think this is one area that Honda did an excellent job on is on the styling of the bike. I like the way they integrated the LED lights and uh, could it be better? Sure, there's always things they could have improved on the styling, but overall I think the bike looks super modern and super cool. So that's one of my favorite features. I think Honda did a really good job with all the switch gear and the controls, the hand controls. Everything's laid out pretty logically. Uh, it's pretty easy to find and get to. Uh, the one improvement maybe could have been the horn button that could have been made a little bit easier to find with your left hand. But overall, I think the console, the hand controls are all very well laid out, very well designed. Uh, also the dash components, all the onboard computers, the information that you have available to you, I think is pretty well uh, integrated on this bike and, and they give you a lot of good information. So I'm very pleased with that. I've been wanting an electric windshield on a Goldwing for years and uh, I rode a BMW many years ago, maybe 10 years ago, and it had an electric windshield. And I thought, man, this is really cool because when it's hot out, you're going through a small town and it's hot, you could lower that windshield, get a little more air. Uh, and then when you're on the highway, you need a little more wind protection, you can raise it up. Well, Honda did a really good job with this electric windshield. It has about four inches of travel and it really makes a huge difference. And it's one of the things I loved about this bike and one of the things that encouraged me to buy it from the very beginning. It's something the previous Goldwing really could have used. I know a lot of people say, ah, who needs an electric windshield? Don't knock it until you try it. It really is a great feature. Now, let's talk a little bit about this engine and transmission. I have the DCT model, so it's a really cool technology, and I know a lot of uh, uh, purists uh, tend to think you have to have a clutch and you have to shift a manual transmission. Um, don't Again, don't knock it till you try it. Um, you know, DCT transmissions, you're, you're going to find these in Ferraris, Lamborghinis, uh, Formula One race cars use DCT transmissions. It's a really incredible technology and it's one that we have available to us with this new Goldwing. Um, I really grew to love it. I had mixed emotions at first. It took me a few days and a few weeks to get used to it, uh, but once you get used to it, it's really, really cool. So I like the engine and the transmission. I'll talk a little bit more about what I don't like about this engine a little later. But with the ride modes that you have available to you, especially the Econ mode, 
Uh, this Goldwing gets much better gas mileage uh, than my previous Goldwing, and that's one of the things I really like. Uh, on a round town driving, I can routinely get 40 to 42 miles to the gallon, and we're at about 500 foot elevation here. If you're at a higher elevation, you can expect better mileage. Uh, when I ride this in the mountains, I get incredible mileage. But um, I do get good gas mileage, 40, 42, somewhere in that range, around town. Now, the highway mileage uh, has not really improved that much over the previous Goldwing. It's a little better than what I got with the previous Goldwing, but not, not as big as the in-town driving. So I do like the increased mileage. Uh, and overall, I think the engine and transmission is a nice, uh, lots of power, tons of torque, just like you're used to from all the Gold Wings in the past. This bike just pulls from any RPM, uh, something that you don't find on a lot of motorcycles. It's really got some great, uh, great torque. You know, just in general, the size of the motorcycle, it's smaller than the previous Goldwing, but I kind of like that. Now, I know some of you guys are really big and you like to do lots of long distance touring and the previous Goldwing was really great for that. But this motorcycle is much more approachable uh, to more people that ride motorcycles. It's just easier to handle and uh, I think it, it's just a great size, it's a great platform and it's very easy to just get on this bike and ride it. I love the size of this new motorcycle. Now when we come back, I'm going to talk to you about some of the things I hate about this 2018 Goldwing. Yeah, maybe hate's a strong word, but some of the things I don't like and some of the things I wish Honda would address. Welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage, 10,000 mile review of the 2018 Honda Goldwing. Now in my last section, I told you about all the things I love about the bike, and of course there's many, many more things I love about the bike. And this section I said I was going to talk about things I hate about the new Goldwing. There's really nothing uh, that I absolutely hate. There's some things I'm disappointed with, uh, some things I think Honda should address, but I don't know if any of these things really rise to the level of hate. So well, let's talk about a few of them, because a few of them have just cropped up just in the last couple thousand miles, and I want to make sure uh, you're aware of them. Uh, and if you're considering a new 2018 or 2019 Goldwing, or if you own one already, uh, these are things you can kind of be on the lookout for. So one thing recently happened is I was in a parking lot the other day when it was just about sunrise, and the sun hit my dash just right, and I noticed some fogging on the inside of that clear dash cover. Uh, it was very concerning because it appears some moisture formed inside that cover, and then I guess it dried and created like a haze or a fog. And uh, it, it, for any of you that know about working on this Goldwing, it's very difficult to get that dash out of there. You got to pretty much take the bike apart to do it. You got to take the, you know, the windshield off and the meter visor cover and all of these other parts, the top shelter, the side covers, the inner panels. I mean, it's all got to come off just to get to that dash. So um, I've heard from a couple other people on Facebook that had this same problem and they actually got the dealer to replace the dash under warranty. Uh, I suspect this is something that could be cleaned, uh, that if I could get the dash off there I could clean it good and maybe put some anti-fogging agent or something. Uh, there hasn't been any information that I can find from Honda that addresses this problem. But I've had three other Gold Wings and I've never had any problems with fogging on the inside of a dash. So this is kind of an unforced error on Honda's part. Um, and you know, you could also say the same thing about the size of the trunk. I mean, everybody's complained that you can't get a helmet or two helmets in the trunk. I can't get my single uh, flip face helmet into the trunk unless I remove the Bluetooth communicator. There's just no excuse for that. Honda should have thought of this. Uh, their designers, whoever designed that trunk, had no idea what he was doing. Obviously, he wasn't a rider. Uh, the excuse they gave is that it, you know, they did this for the design, for the overall sleekness and the design of the motorcycle. But honestly, I think the trunk, if anything, it looks a little too small. So I think if they just made it a half an inch bigger all the way around, you could have easily gotten two helmets in there. Still wouldn't have been as big as the previous Goldwing, but it would have been big enough to get a couple of helmets in with the Bluetooth communicators, and uh, they wouldn't have all this grief, and I think it actually would have fit the look of the bike better than worse. So anyway, the trunk, the fogging on the dash, 
I've also noticed the dash is very hard to keep clean without scratching it. You know, it scratches very easily, uh, even surface dust. Uh, if you're not careful with how you clean it, you will get some little tiny hairline scratches in that dash. Now, I have been able to polish out some of these fine hairline scratches using the Aerolon uh, Show Polish. I uh, used it on the clear dash, it works great. I also use it on my visor, my helmet visor uh, covers, you know, little clear face shield. That's the word I was looking for. So um, it works great getting out those tiny little scratches. It won't get out a big scratch, but it'll get out the little tiny ones. Uh, so that's just something you can put in your uh, uh, memory bank. Uh, I'll put a link in the description down below where you can buy that Aerolon show polish because it really is great stuff. Also, just about a thousand miles ago, I'd say at around 9,000 miles, I noticed my foot peg rubbers were already starting to crack. Now, uh, they're splitting. The little metal uh, bar underneath is wearing through. Now, I want to know if you guys have had this same problem. If you have, I want you to put it in the comments down below. Uh, to me, there's no excuse to have to replace those foot peg rubbers after 10,000 miles. Um, these little things, they're about 20 bucks to replace a set of them, depending on where you buy them. But uh, in my, you know, my opinion, I had a 2007 Goldwing with 70,000 miles, and I never replaced the foot peg rubbers. Now, on my 2012, I did have to replace them a couple of times. So apparently somewhere along the way, Honda changed their rubber compound that they use for these foot pegs. And uh, they're very, very soft, and they wear very quickly. And uh, I just, that to me is a little bit disturbing. I wish uh, it, that weren't the case. Um, another thing I've noticed that I'm not crazy about is after I installed my trunk rack, which is the Honda trunk rack, I have noticed that the trunk is much, much harder to close and harder to open. Uh, it, it's like it's sticking. And I, you know, I don't know if it's because of these uh, stronger actuators that come with that uh, trunk, li or trunk rack or if it's some other issue. If you've installed a luggage rack and you've noticed your trunk is harder to close or open, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm curious to know if I'm the only one. Uh, I'm going to try to find a fix for it, but I didn't see any way to adjust those hinges when I reinstalled the hinges. They look like they just go on one way. So I don't know exactly what might be the problem there. But anyway, uh, it's something that you should know about. Now, some people have also complained that they have trouble closing or opening the left side saddlebag door. I actually saw Max McAllister do a couple of videos on this where he has kind of a fix for this. Mine works intermittently. Sometimes it opens fine, sometimes it sticks. So I don't know if it's a systemic problem with all the 2018, 2019 gold wings. They will open, you just have to kind of pull on it to get it to open. So uh, let me know in the comments down below if you've had trouble with your left saddlebag door sticking. You know, I've spent a lot of time talking about the GPS. I don't want to go into a lot of details. Just suffice it to say that it's still underwhelming. Uh, even after Honda provided a couple of updates, I'm still not blown away by the performance. I installed a Garmin uh, GPS on my 2018 just because, to me, it's the only way to go if you're doing long distance, multi-day type tours. Uh, the Honda GPS just is not up to the task. So I just don't like it and I don't like the interface. I think it's clunky. I think it's hard to figure out how to do the settings too many menus to go through. It's just not very well designed for a motorcyclist. Uh, and that really kind of extends out to this entire audio navigation system that Honda put on. It just was not very well thought out. AM FM reception is the worst I've seen on any radio. You'll get better reception on a 1965 transistor ra Radio Shack radio uh, than you will from this Honda Goldwing AM FM system. It's just terrible. Now the the uh, XM Sirius reception is wonderful. It's great. But when it comes to FM AM, not good at all. So Honda needs to fix that. I don't know if it's an antenna issue. I don't know what it is, but it just is very, very poor for a motorcycle that costs this much money. Now, I want to point out something, too, that uh, I think uh, Kevin over at MC Rider pointed out when he got his 2018 Goldwing. It's a very good point that Honda Goldwing owners are probably the most spoiled motorcycle riders in the universe, and there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, these are things, I'm, these are nitpicky things. If you come to the Goldwing from another motorcycle platform, you're gonna be blown away 
by how great this motorcycle is uh, because it handles better, it's smoother, it's quieter, it's just incredible power. It's, it's a great motorcycle. So I want to make sure I emphasize that everything I'm talking about today is really nitpicky uh, compared to what another motorcycle is coming in trying this bike would find. So always good to keep things in perspective. It is truly a wonderful motorcycle. You know, I talked about the engine and the transmission in the last section and how good it is, how much power it is. But I'm going to nitpick again. This engine is not as smooth as the previous Goldwing. The previous GL1800 was smooth as silk. You didn't feel any vibration. Uh, you could put it on the center stand and stand a nickel up on its end on the engine, rev the engine, and that nickel would not fall over. You're not going to do that on this Goldwing engine. This engine has a little bit of a buzz to it. It's uh, just not as smooth. Now, I don't know if that's because of the 24 valves or the way they've done the fuel mapping or what it is, but you will notice some buzz in the handlebars. It starts in about maybe 2,000 RPM, really seriously, and you will notice it more so than you did on the previous Goldwing. It's not that bad. It would, certainly wouldn't keep me from buying the motorcycle, and it's much, much smoother than any other motorcycle out there. But there was nothing as smooth as that previous generation, that fifth generation Goldwing. So in summary, I just want to remind you once again, I think it's the best motorcycle I've ever owned. Uh, I absolutely love it. I can't wait to get on and ride it every time I do. Yeah, there's some little nitpicky things I don't like, but in general, uh, it's an incredible machine. Honda did a wonderful job with it. It could use a little bit of tweaking here and there but uh, Honda probably will respond to some of these, these things in the future. So if you're considering a 2018 or 2019 Goldwing, I encourage you to go test ride one, test ride the DCT, give it a try. If you don't like it, get the six-speed manual. You've got choice. So thanks again for joining us today on Cruise Man's Garage.